single idea has the potential to change healthcare forever. The UK has an impressive tradition of innovation that has transformed healthcare. Our next speaker is Professor Sir Rory Collins, Chief Executive of UK Biobank. Rory became Principal Investigator and Chief Executive of the UK Biobank Prospective Study of 500,000 people in September 2005. His work has been in the establishment of large-scale epidemiological studies of the causes, prevention and treatment of heart attacks, other vascular disease and cancer. I would like to invite Rory to explain how the UK Biobank will find cures for the major causes of premature death and disability. So what is UK Biobank? It's 500,000 altruistic individuals in Britain, men and women aged 40 to 69, who came along over the last three years and answered lots of questions, who had lots of measurements done on them, and gave us a large number of different kinds of sample, blood, saliva, urine, which we've put into the bank. The samples of blood from our participants come to this centre in tubes like this. They are centrifuged at low speed and separated into their constituent parts. Those constituent parts are transferred to these tubes, which each have an identifier on them so that we can link them to the participants. Half a million volunteers gave samples and agreed to provide full information about their lifestyles. We wanted to study people who were young enough that we could get information about the way in which they lived, the environment in which they lived, before they developed disease, so that the disease hadn't influenced the measurements we were making. But they need to be old enough that within a reasonable length of time, enough of them will develop particular conditions to allow us to study uh, the determinants of those diseases. Once these tubes have been filled with the blood fractions from the participants, they're then transferred to one of two very low temperature archives where they're stored for long-term use. This has two very important functions. It stores our 10 million samples at minus 80 and keeps the samples in as good condition as possible for future research. And second, it very, very accurately retrieves the samples for research groups so that they know that the samples they have requested are the samples that they get. Historically, it was crucial research by Richard Dole that proved the value of large-scale prospective cohort studies. Richard Dole's British Doctors Study, which asked around 50,000 um, doctors uh, back in the 50s what they smoked and then followed them up over 50 years. We thought doctors would be a good population to study for two reasons. Firstly, we hoped that they might be able to take it a little more seriously, take our inquiry more seriously and be a bit more accurate in filling in their forms. But secondly, because they would be easy to follow up, because they had to keep their name in the medical register if they were continued to practice. The doctor's study demonstrated the full effects of smoking, so that by asking some quite simple questions at baseline, it was able to look at the effects of smoking on all these different conditions. This was how those doctors died over the next 50 years if they were non-smokers. And this is what happened among the smokers. He and Bradford Hill started this study because smoking appeared to cause lung cancer. But what they showed was that it caused a whole slew of other cancers, heart disease, other vascular disease, respiratory disease. And it's this study that has saved tens of millions of lives a year worldwide. Biobank, with 500,000 British participants in it, is like a microscope. It's going to allow us to see how different risk factors act together to cause disease. There's a famous study called Framingham that's used by many doctors to tell you whether or not you should have blood pressure lowering therapy. The Framingham study involved just over 5,000 patients. But how does it help to increase the number of participants? This is showing the relationship between blood pressure and the risk of death from heart attack. And all these lines are the, the uncertainties about where you would put the point if you plotted the risk of heart attack death at different ages. Let's crank the microscope up a bit and have 50,000 people. Starting to come into focus, we can start to see the interaction between age and blood pressure and the risk of dying from heart attack. Should we lower blood pressure in the elderly? Let's crank it up to maximum strength and now we can see this beautiful thing coming into focus. We can see how age and blood pressure interact to influence our risk of having a heart attack. Who should we give treatment to to lower their risk from blood pressure? We are probably unique in the world in that we have the National Health Service. 
So 98% of the people in this country are registered with a National Health Service general practitioner, which means we have the ability to follow their health through their health records. So we can understand who gets what diseases electronically over the next 20 years or so. The altruism of people in Britain I think is extraordinary um, and that they have been prepared to come and join a study like this, spend you know, hours with us, give us consent to link to their health records um, in order to help other people is an amazing thing and it's really quite um, a privilege to be involved in that. It will allow the GP to advise their patients on how to either avoid the condition or manage their condition and in the long term because of the time it takes to develop uh, medicines for the treatments of diseases it will lead to better and more effective medicines so it's a much more cost-effective way of treating people. You've shown really quite dramatically how the power of numbers and how they allow you to, to crank up the magnification on some really very difficult questions. But will your findings apply to genetically diverse populations such as the Chinese, the Japanese, people in Southeast Asia or Africa? I think it's a, a very important point. First of all, to stress that we're looking at all sorts of risk factors, not just genetic ones. But UK Biobank, within the range of exposures it can study, will, I think, largely be generalizable to populations across the world in terms of uh, lifestyle, environmental, and genetics. The range of conditions that UK Biobank will be able to identify causes and hopefully lead to treatments and preventions is huge. I hope it will lead to new cures for at least some of the major diseases which disable and kill people. But the study is also about health. So how can we prolong health and prevent disease? It will transform the way in which GPs look after their patients and indeed how patients live their lives.